My name is Rapsing, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, specifically the Endless Harvest, here in the Darkest Republic. Uh, Alright, we need to get that Sleeper's Herald down. We actually need to control our stress more than we need to do literally anything else, actually, so... Uh, I think the first thing that we do here is... Stress Reduction. Definitely should have targeted that stun on the back line. For some reason, I just didn't. I don't know. Well, at least because we've killed that Sleeper's Herald, we now have the ability to target this Plow Horse. Or not. They can, you know, give themselves <coughs> stealth, which is going to make it really difficult on me. There. Mistara throws out the Battle Buff there. Did you just lose stress? It looked like you lost stress when that happened. Stress seems mostly to have been managed already. No one's in immediate danger. Now you might say I should probably aim higher than just not having anyone immediately in danger. Uh, to which I would respond, you aim higher. Also, by the way, uh, that was a 50% chance of a stun and then a 80% chance of a stun. And both of them missed. So that's cool. Pull the ground for the extra hiding. We're going to have to get a battle buff out of Mistara because our accuracy is starting to dip. Okay. I mean, honestly, this is kind of suiting me currently. Had an 80% chance to hit that stun. Missed, of course. Keep reducing that stress. There's no level at which we're just going to go, oh yeah, I'm okay with that amount of stress. Cool. Alright, by moving myself manually backwards there, Mastara now has the ability to use... Nice, they're stunned, because you can only use Rampart from positions 3 and forwards. Right, and now our party positioning is rectified. Let's get that battle buff. It would have been nice this entire time to have been using uh, Moth Mother. It would be super impactful had we been doing so. Uh, but also, look how our stress is being managed. This is, this has its value as well. This has its place. Precision. Ooh. Haven't heard that one before, I don't think, in that manner. Nice. Very good crits. Get this that stress heal. Actually, does literally everyone has 32 stress exactly right now. That's wild as hell. Oh, that's accidental entirely, also. Nice. Oh, now we're on balanced again. Uh, I think I actually want to kick in the extra damage versus this Foreman, so it's time to stop using Moth Mother's other ability. Cool. Mm, Moth Mother 8 might actually even go for a battle buff at the very start of this. Yeah, just to give extra crit chance to... Patricia, who's about to roll against the Foreman. Nice. And as a result, well, maybe not as a result. I don't know whether or not that's why I got that crit. But we did end up critting, and that's just enough to kill the Foreman. So apparently we have three different way, uh, ways that we have to go through before we get our next quote-unquote boss. That battle buff. We're gonna need that. Mm. Unfortunately, that didn't blight the Sleeper's Herald, so it didn't actually put it down. Oh well. Manually kicking my own damage at the very end there. Ugh. 
So pedestrian. I prefer not to get involved personally with all these matters. <clears throat> get back on top of that stress healing. I mean, like, are we scared of two farmhands? No. We also don't even need to take our... Uh, sorry, we don't need to take our time. Uh, we don't need to speed up killing them at all. Because after this final one dies, we're probably just going to get teleported away. Ooh, nice miss. Are we fools to press on? I think not. Ooh. You're dead. A frontliner is dead. Uh, Scarecrow is not yet. Let the crops doesn't get responded to or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, backliner is also dead. Beautiful. So that was a very effective clearing right there. We actually overkill this wave by two enemies. I wonder if that means that the next wave is going to be easier because two enemies already are dead at the very start of it. Stress heal, obviously. Wow. If we get the next action... Huh. Okay. I guess we were intended to have a couple turns of just being free and Compassion fancy and clear by ourselves here. In the fever pitch of yeah. battle. That's a sleeper's dream. To throw us into... Oh, wow. Literally nothing here. These fields are fallow yet. This still twisted mockery finds a way. So it, I think that is for the tree, right? And then you chop it down to lose stress on a character, but unfortunately we just don't have a tree for some reason. Sucks. All right, just push onward. The colors shift yet again to haunting. Ooh, look at that Swinator Heaver in the back line. Swine Heaver, sorry. Uh, Swinator Champion is actually gonna be really frustrating as well. Someone's got to damage it eventually, and it is a high priority target. No disease, thankfully. Fallen chain. I was considering giving Rito, uh, instead of the Tome of Holy Healing, I was going to consider giving them Wilbur's Flag for plus 10 dodge and plus 50% to stun resist. Ultimately, I decided not to, as you can probably tell. Uh, but it was very strongly considered for a very strong period of time. Strong period of time. Very long period of time, wrong. Okay, hopefully Moth Mother gets the first action the next round. We can harvest. Nice. Great. And the harvest didn't even leave a corpse. Okay, if we can somehow kill the Swine Slayer in this turn. Damn, would have had to be a crit there. I actually uh, was trying to hit the Swine Slayer. I think I just looped my mouse like this while I was trying to do the attack. And as a result, hit the wrong target. That's really annoying because I wanted to not only stun but move the Swine Slayer so the Swine Attack Champion would be in the front line. Ah, well, they would have done Trot Repeat, the Trot Retreat, uh, most likely either way. Actually, you know what? Swine Attack might not have things from position two and three. Look, they had crunching backhand from there at least. Woo! Giant self heal there. Wild as hell. All right. And that crit leaves no corpse. So now the Swine Sword Champion is completely screwed. Ugh. Crits, though. <laughs> Second one up. All right. Uh, this one in the front line. Mm, don't need to do too much more damage to it. That'll work. Unfortunately, we're not getting battle buffs out anymore because we're stunning as well. I know, we are stunning. Uh, as well as also using the bleeds from Moth Mother. Hmm. 
literally don't even have a chance to stun there, so I'm just going to go for the damage. We're not 100% on the hits anymore, though, so that's also a problem. Yeah, we're going to have to battle buff. If we don't have accuracy and if we don't have crit chance, we're not going to be killing this Wanator Champion that easily. And they're in the front line right now, so they're never going to be, you know, less harmful. Crunching backhand on the third line. Misses. Nice. More than happy to stress removing myself right there. Lame. Patricia was probably going to use that turn just to go straight for the Cultist Witch, but... Eh, I still need to. We also actually really need to up your accuracy, Patricia. Patricia was only at a 79 to hit there. That's really bad. Alright, stun the Swinator. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't land. There's only a 25% chance of that to stun. So they can pig spear from line two and three. That's good information to have. <laughs> mm hmm. Let this stun, but not move the Swinator champion. Okay, it did. Awesome. Unfortunately, because the Swinosaur Champion tried to act faster than the Cultist Champion, which I don't think is common, the Swinosaur Champion should be faster. Oh, sorry, should be uh, slower. Significantly, actually. Um, the Cultist Champion didn't use Stumbling Scratch, which is what they were going to use if they were at the back line. We'll use the Battle Buff here from Moth Mother because they don't have any good targets in their main line. I mean, if I'm ever going to be toying with targets for a while, it's going to be these, so... Woo! Crit heals on exactly the person who needed it as well. Very nice. I could stun here, but I think it is so unimpactful to stun that I am better off just going for the bad buff. Debuff is... Oh, wow, that's actually a pretty significant debuff. Don't be surprised. Holy hell. <gasps> ah, that's really good. All right. And then these Bone Militia have, you know, three rounds on the field per. Backliner is already dead. We're going to leave them there as well. I might AoE them later. If we get Mastara earlier than we get Patricia, I might move Mastara back so that I can load up a... Oh, never mind. Definitely not. So that I could have loaded up a... Impale is going to be the answer. The end of that. Ugh, giant crits on the large flesh eater there, right there. Gain will go for the battle buff. The Bone Militia are each going to get a action this round is a but that's their final action and their actions are so unimpactful because i decided not to kill them i got out extra buffs extra heals all that kind of thing and as a result i feel the large flesh eater is going to be going down way faster than they otherwise might have uh, i should definitely remove that debuff though negative 40 percent damage is uh potent I mean, everyone on the field is already dead. We ah, got it. Mm -hmm. We should be teleported away. That should have been a stress heal, obviously, on Mastara there. Like, there's no contest there. That just definitely should have been that. Oh, well. As well as that should have been just a direct heal on Mastara. This is locked. From the comet's maddening light. For now. Paralyzer's Crest used to be so good. <clears throat> Sadly, not anymore. Right. Onwards yet again. 
<clears throat> Splendorous. Okay, I've never seen this season before. Uh, plus 5% to virtue chance and plus 20% to stress skills. A lost echo. Trapped forever in the sparkling void. That's awesome. We're way more effective right now. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all can pull the stress on if you want to. It'll be okay, apparently. Plus 50% damage when guarded for two rounds, which means that when it gets to your round, you'll only have plus 25% damage when guarded, which is probably enough to kill that bone royalty. It was either going to be something like that or it was going to be Impale, but the problem with the Impale was always going to be the continued existence of the Bone Royalty in the backline. And even though we are better at dealing with stress in this season, I'd still really like to not have to really... Oh, we left them alive. That sucks so badly. What? How did you dodge? Oh, wait. We have literally no accuracy up right now? Cool. That'll be why. If I had to guess, I'm going to say that's probably related. Speaking of, battle buff time. As much as I wanted to stun the bone surgeon there. Sergeant! Sergeant! Hey. Bad move me. I'm gonna go with the battle buff here as well. Great. Mm -hmm. Target the bone sergeant because we're gonna be going for the bone royalty with our damage, which apparently turns out not to be enough. <clears throat> Hopefully we have enough speed here to act faster than bone royalty here. On, got it. Woo, hell of a lot of stress heal from that. Right, now we have ridiculous accuracy. We might now be too accurate. God, the stress heals. They're so wild in here. I love it. Also, I want to know what's going to happen when we get to that next gem. Is that just going to be another boss? Seems like that's probably the thing with the most you know, precedent. I'm removing all of the bulbous maggots immediately because number one, they're easier to remove from the field. Uh, but number two, they have the ability to give you diseases as well as stress. Um, and the diseases in particular, I am extremely not keen to have. Because I would just have to deal with them for the rest of the dungeon. Because I have no current way in this dungeon to remove them. The rest of the stress that we have probably just deals with it over the course of the combat. Yeah, almost dealt with all of it literally in the next attack. Uh, that's 100. We have taken down 100 now. 101, actually. An achievement called This Is Nothing. So apparently, we're supposed to go a lot further. Definitely got to get the Mothmother buff out there. Gonna need this extra speed. Mm -hmm. Nice dodges. Um, I'm gonna throw out a protection here. I'm gonna try and give enough damage to Patricia to have them destroy the Bone Lancer. Beautiful. Patricia. And we'll also throw out a stun on the Bone Royalty. I think we go for the Battle Buff again. I think acting over the top of all of our enemies is giving us a huge advantage right now. It'd be a little bit silly to pass that up. 17 to like 25 on the damage table. We rolled a 17. Unfortunate, but you know, happens from time to time.
soothe. Sedated. I chose not to heal Masara because Masara has so much max HP that it's not necessary. Right? They're actually very far. They're probably further from dead than anyone else on the field right now. Um, damn, that sucks. The spawn of that menacing gargoyle pushed the positioning. Uh, I was intending for the Bone Lancer to also be hit by Mothmother's attack there. That was the entire thing I was trying to set up. So, to miss that right there. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the try. Okay. Cool. Let's focus on the crystal elaboration. Yeah, just to guarantee that we can try and... Well, not guarantee, because it wasn't guaranteed, but get as close to a guarantee as we can that we remove that from the field. Medicine Gargoyle is extraordinarily easy, not only to stun, but also to control. So I didn't know there were occasionally splendorous events. That's really cool. This is only a heal for a single person. Yep. All right, 21. So yeah, we can continue. Probably got a boss fight coming up as well. The light bends and now it's haunting. Oh, hello thing from the stars. Um. Existence folds in on itself. I I was Yeah, I'm down to kill you, sure. Alien malignity. Oh yeah. Mm. Get 18 damage from our healer. Effect. Josh. Oh, when you compare that with what the healer did, it becomes really absurd. Get those buffs out there. Weakening shot on Moth Mother does not hit its debuff. Very nice. Return to the stars. Oh! I am crit. Huge bleed as well. Yep. This is me relying on Rito here, so please don't let me down. 6 to 11, roll 7 on the damage table. Thanks, Rito. Ah, well. At least I learned to never, ever hope or trust or any of those things, because that is not a good thing to have occurred. A lot of stress. Return to the stars. Pretty giant bleed. We do have to kind of just punch through the thing from the stars, though. But I hope this isn't like the herald of some other enemy that I'm then going to have to fight. We're going to weaken up that crystalline aberration. Thanks, Rito. Mm. Very least, it's a very, very low damage attack. Damn. Also a low damage attack. Ridiculous debuffs on Moth Mother there, though. Wowzers. We need to get the extra accuracy and extra crit out so that the thing from the stars dies. Uh, I need to remove this debuff. It's huge. It's ungodly huge. All right, that bleed is 10 damage this round, so... Mm, we only need four more damage. Thank you. Thank you, Rito. Momentary abatement. Hell yeah. 
And then the Crystal Aberration is still going to go off, but... You know, kind of more okay with that. Oh my gosh, we got the Musket Ball! Hell yeah, I'm definitely taking that back home. Um, We're going to have to use a bunch of Laudanum here because there's like... Oh, stress. Mm. We're going to need the rest of that Laudanum as the thing. I think bandages might be one of the easiest things to get rid of for us. Okay. And then everyone's physical needs are satisfied. 26. No, we're going to go onward. Ooh, splendorous! Yes. Alright, let's get that uh, stress heal. Obviously not in a there. Refraction. Well, we have the extra virtue chance as well. Hmm. I wonder if this is effectively like the virtue scumming season. We should be dealing with it right now as a result. As much as I want to use the battle ballad, this this enemy party is very lethal. Uh, so, so we need to deal damage. Mm. Okay, it doesn't get moved. Good. Buff our party again, so the Impale hopefully does enough to kill both of the midliners. Don't you dare crit. Don't you dare move. Damn it. The Impale was not enough to kill the midliners. Oh my god, was it not enough. Not even close. Well, if we can get another in... Nice. <laughs> another one gets us close enough. Don't you dare crit. Dodge. Don't you dare crit. Okay. Let's definitely get that buff out there while we can. Hey, and a giant heal. Nice. Down. Wonderful. -er. Awesome. Didn't actually want that to be how that happened, but mm, okay, it worked out in the end at least. Body heal. Ooh. Sedated. Mm-hmm. Of course they spawned. Why would they not have? Um... If I don't roll a stress heal on Masara right now, we are definitely having Masara stress out. So, yep, Hal would have done it immediately there. Oh, okay. I couldn't have known that we were going to dodge that, but Hal would have gotten us. We actually couldn't stun that blow to the draw. That sucks. Right, we'll try again. And that one's way more successful. Beautiful. Again, it was like a 70, uh, 70, 20% chance to miss, sorry. Oh, gosh. But its roll has taken a lot more damage than I really thought it was going to. There's the howl. Don't worry anyone, don't worry anyone, don't worry anyone, don't worry anyone. No one got worried. Good. Oh, gosh. Well, at least I've got Harvest to kill the Bloated Thrall next round, but never mind. We can't kill it with the Bloated Thrall Harvest. All right, so someone else is going to have to actually attack the Bloated Thrall for some reason. Good crit. Good crit lollipop. Thank you, Rito. Right, we need some more battle buffs as well. But unfortunately, stunning this Blood Piranha and moving it behind the Insatiable Ghoul is so valuable right now because it means that a, uh, a harvest is ridiculously effective. Mm -hmm. Had to do it. 
<sighs> Very nice crit. All right. Time for some buffs and stress heals. Or just buffs and normal heals. <clears throat> okay. Are we fools to press on? Are we? I think so. Do need to kill this bloated thrall ASAP. Ooh, nice crit. So throw that impale through. See if I can stun one of you. I'm more likely to be able to stun the Pelagic Piranha. Unfortunately, the Pelagic Piranha is slightly slower than the Paralyzing Stinger. But both of them get outsped by Moth Mother. Perfect. Unfortunately, that means that I don't get to use Moth Mother for a... Oh, gosh. Look at all of that stress heal there. I crit and I crit heal. Oh, well. Unfortunately, it means I don't get uh, more stress recovery out of that what I kind of desperately wanted. We need to probably start just using stress recovery moves here. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, use it after I crit. That's so lame. Because if I didn't go for the stress heal, that pal uh, the paralyzing stinger definitely would be dead. Don't. Thank you. Let's go for the buff again. And hopefully stun that back line. Mm -mm. That was literally a 10% chance to miss that, by the way. I had to go for the Harvest there. It kills the Paralyzer Stinger. It sets up for the death on the next one as well. That is to say, the Pelagic Piranha directly behind. The Sleeper is going to teleport me out of this, like, really, really soon. And I'm still going to have a ridiculous amount of stress on, like, all of my characters, which is just not good. Keep those buffs up. Ugh. That crit heal now means I now need to retarget that Pelagic Piranha as well. It's so annoying. And it's no, not even going to die because it didn't uh, get bled there. A lot of these crits near the very end have uh, helped out our... Pause. I'm actually going to kill that target for the possible self-stress heal, as well as the self-heal for actually doing the attack. But yeah, because the Sleeper's Dream is about to take us out of here anyway. So. Figures. Battle behind. Battle ahead. But for a moment, peace. Not particularly keen on taking anything else home from that. And that's going to be the end of this Endless episode for the moment. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Darkest Dungeon. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.